How's it going, guys? So, um, I was looking through boxing news today, just uh, reading some articles, and I came across one thing, and uh, it's suggesting that Chris Eubank Jr. is going to be moving up to the super middleweight division, and he's going to be challenging a guy called Reynold Quinlan for the IBO super middleweight title. Now, for those of you who don't know who Reynold Quinlan is, he recently stopped uh, Daniel Giel. Now, uh, Daniel Giel... Of course, as we all know, Daniel Giel is considerably past his prime now. I mean, he was knocked out brutally by Triple G. Uh, he was knocked out brutally by um, Miguel Cotto. Uh, he had a very tough uh, back-and-forth war with Darren Barker. Also, a tough back-and-forth war with Felix Sturm. You know, both of those fights were very difficult where he took a lot of shots in both of them. So, I think it's uh, safe to say that at this point, Daniel Giel is... You know, he's seen better days, let's put it that way, he's definitely seen better days, plus he wasn't suited to super middleweight, so I, I don't think we can really look at this Quinlan guy and say that, you know, a knockout victory over Daniel Giel means that he's world level, he's clearly not. Now, uh, I haven't seen a lot of uh, Reynold Quinlan, I've just seen what I could see on YouTube, uh, I'm probably going to have to have to look at this guy's record, and well, I haven't even looked at his record, I just know, I just remember reading a news article that he beat Daniel Giel, um... So yeah, um, I'm going to look, look more at this guy and see what he can do, but you know, from what I've heard, the, the fight's going to be on ITV, and uh, <laughs> Chris Eubank Sr. said something, I think it was on Twitter, I think somebody told me on um, on Facebook about it, somebody told me that the fight's going to be, it's going to be pay-per-view, and I'm thinking to myself, wait, hang on a second, ITV, pay-per-view, you know, how does that work? I don't know, I'll have to read up and see what's going on here, but the reason I wanted to make this video is because I just wanted to talk about, um, you know, my thoughts on how Chris Eubank Jr. would do at 168. Now, um, we all know probably the main reason that he's moving up to 168 is because he talked a whole bunch of shit about Triple G and uh, how he was going to destroy Tri Triple G and whatnot. And then when it came to signing the contract and, uh, you know, taking the fight, he basically shot himself and, and uh, you know, <laughs> all that tough guy talk went out the window and he ended up fighting... Um, you know, some some journeyman was it was it Tom Duran that he fought, or was that Groves that fought Tom Duran? No, it was yeah, it was um, it was Eubank Jr. He fought Tom Duran, and um, you know, it was just a it was a complete mismatch. You could see that Chris Eubank Jr. is clearly too talented for these British level fighters. I mean, look what he did to Nick Blackwell, man. I mean, Nick Blackwell is a solid domestic level uh, British fighter, and um, yeah, Chris Eubank Jr dangerously beat the shit out of the guy so clearly he is a a level above british level now um you know uh, the triple g fight would have been good i think it is a competitive fight i do think triple g would have beaten him but you know uh, it's an interesting style he would have had to deal with you know Uban jr's uh got them nice little precise uppercuts that he throws and it would have been interesting to see how triple g dealt with that but you know um he does he didn't want the fight and, th and like i said that's probably the reason he's moving up now, he will be an interesting addition to the 168 division. Now, um, how does he do in that division? Um, you know, there are a lot of contenders that, in my opinion, he could beat, and maybe even champions. Um, as I said, this fight against uh, Renard Quinlan, it's going to be for the IBO title, which, you know, it's a prestigious title. It's not the most recognized sanctioning body, but it's something that's interesting to have. You know, it's a bargaining chip. Um, so, you know, he's going to win that belt. And then I also heard that, and again, this is just from people telling me stuff on Facebook and whatnot. I heard that there's rumours that he may be lined up to fight George Groves at some point. Now, uh, George Groves, he's supposedly going to be fighting Fedor Chudnov for the vacant WBA title. Now, this WBA shit is getting ridiculous, man. The WBA said that they were going to consolidate all their belts, yet Tyrone Zoig, who is the current WBA super middleweight champion, he, I think he's the regular champion, but the the super title is vacant, and, and Groves and Trudenoff are going to be fighting for the super title who, that Felix Sturm va recently vacated. Oh, guys, it's just so confusing that I, I don't even keep up keep up with that shit no more, man. It's crazy, but yeah, Groves is going to be fighting for the WBA title against Trudenoff. Trudenoff's a good boxer. He's well schooled. He, you know, he can box for twelve rounds. Uh, he's, he's got good defense and whatnot, but he's not going to beat Groves, and I'll tell you why. He's just not busy enough, okay? Uh, the fight's going to be on a Sowland card. Uh, the Sowland are, are Groves' promotional company. Um, you know, Trudenoff doesn't hit hard. He's not a puncher. He's a good boxer, well-schooled, but he's not a puncher. Uh, and uh, even if he does manage to beat Groves, 
you know, it, it'll probably be a fair decision. But look, if it, if it's a close fight, Joe, my, my point is Groves is a heck of a lot more athletic. You know, he's, he's unorthodox. He throws a lot of punches. He's fast. And um, I don't, and this guy won't stop him. So if the fight's competitive at all, Grove should should get the decision. That's all I'm saying. You know, he's going to be the A side here. So, you know, Chudnov ain't going to beat Groves. I just can't see it happening. So, yeah, Groves, he's likely going to be the WBA super middleweight champion if this is going to happen. And, um, yeah, I would love to see Groves fight uh, Uman Jr. I think that's a great fight. Um, I think Eubank Jr. would be, a, I do think he's a very interesting addition to that division. Now, as I said, I haven't seen a whole lot of Quinlan to say, to really make a prediction on that fight. But um, I'm just speculating here because, uh, again, you know, Quinlan hasn't had that many fights. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's very early on in his career, in fact. And, and you know, the fact that he beat um, Daniel Giel, again, it, it doesn't fill me with confidence, okay? I, I would expect anybody who's anywhere near world class at this stage to beat Daniel Gill, especially after all the hard fights he's been through and the uh, the brutal knockout he suffered against Triple G and against Cotto. So, you know, I, I don't think that Daniel Gill is a commendable victory anymore. Okay, he's pretty much just a gatekeeper. He should probably retire, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, Grove should win this fight. Um, but, again, I'll need to watch more of Quinlan to make a prediction. So, uh, these are just some of my thoughts. Um you know, how do you guys think? Do you guys think that Groves can be a force at 168? I mean, obviously, uh, they tried to spark a rivalry between Groves and DeGale a couple of years ago. Uh, sorry, um, Eubank Jr. and DeGale a couple of years ago. Obviously, Groves and DeGale already had their rivalry. But yeah, Eubank Jr. and DeGale had a, a bit of an argument or something. Or something over sparring. Um, what it was, uh, Chris Eubank Jr. claimed that he gave De Gale a boxing lesson in sparring, and De Gale responded by saying, "No, no, it was him that gave that gave Eubank the the boxing lesson." That was when they were both with uh, um, Mick Hennessy, and they were both fighting on Channel Five. They were they were both promoted by him. So um, yeah, that was quite a while ago now, a couple of years. And yeah, they tried to spark a rivalry between them two, and it just didn't work out because Eubank wouldn't move up in weight to fight De Gale. So uh, yeah, you know, if, if that fight were to happen again, that'd be very interesting. I would like to see it. Um, I, I, you know, I mentioned Tyron Zoig earlier. That's a good fight. You know, Tyron Zoig is a little bit basic, but he's a strong, tough, durable kid, and he hits he hits quite hard. So I think that'd be an interesting fight. Um, um, Felix Sturm. I don't think he's coming back. I think he's retired now. Um, he, you know, he's got legal trouble and injury trouble, so he'll be out of the ring for the foreseeable future. We won't see that fight. Um, you got Badu Jack, obviously, who's fighting De Gale. You know, there's a lot of fights for for Chris Eubank Jr. at super middleweight, and a lot of fights domestically too. You got people like Paul Smith, for example. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what he can do. Callum Smith too. Um, anyway, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.